Okay, sure. Do you want to do anything to say anything before? Well, yeah. What I want to say is uh, River Bay Outfitters is a very special place, and Paul's a very special person. Long before he had a shop, long before he made a nickel on any of this, he was giving away everything he had. He was teaching us how to tie flies. He was taking us up to Connecticut. He was bringing us to the Housatonic. He was taking us out to the, the, the salt. And uh, when he got the fly shop, it just gave him a roof over his head to do all the things he always did. So he's a very genuine person and the kind of guy you want to hang out with. Plus, you get free coffee when you go to the shop. All right. So here's Paul and in front of his, his desk at his shop. And River Bay Outfitters is the host of this presentation. I thank you, Paul, for asking me. And what the presentation is about is exploring the cat skills. And uh, I always say when I begin these things that I'm not an expert. I'm just an old man who has been there a lot. Uh, you know, I have uh, favorite places and I've been fortunate enough to explore probably every major stream in the park uh, with friends. And uh, for example, has anybody ever seen this, this waterfall in front of me here? I know one guy in the room has anyway. Um, that's, a, that's in the Catskills on one of the streams we're going to talk about. And if you haven't seen it yet, you haven't explored enough. Now, now when you're exploring the Catskills, the, uh, one way to start is to do some reading or in this day and age, of course, the internet. And there's tons of stuff, tons of information out there about the Catskills. But these three books were kind of where I, where I started. The Art Flix Stream Guide gives you all the flies. Catskill Rivers gives you all the history and background, and the, you'll see the beautiful maps that are in this book I'm going to show you. And then Ed Van Putt, uh, his book on specifically the beaver kill, its history and its people. And in Paul's uh, uh, announcement, his newsletter, he's got a letter there from, uh, or an article there by Ed Van Putt, which you might want to read. And there's also a couple of other things there on the Catskills that you should look at on, on his uh, newsletter. Uh, there's plenty of signs. When you're up there, if you're wondering where Barnhart's Pool is, it's behind the sign. So you just have to go <laughs> drive down Old 17 and stop at all the signs, okay? It's uh, it's not hidden. So sometimes they give these presentations and you get criticized because you're giving away all the secret spots. Well, there's no secret spots. So this is the Catskills. They've been here for a long time. They've been fishing them for a long time. And uh, I'm just going to give you an overview of, of, of how it lays, okay? Also, if you like to go with other people, there's plenty of organizations you can join that do trips to the Catskills. Every one of these has a weekend trip to the Catskills at least. And uh, also when you join these, you meet other people that love the Catskills and you can buddy up and, and take trips. So definitely look into, into joining and supporting you know, these kinds of groups. And there's guides. You know, Paul was saying he's, he's got his, uh, his annual trip to the Catskills where he does the Delaware. And that's very worthwhile. Uh, and it's up in deposit, I think, Paul, the place you stay. Yeah, we stay then, at the Outfitters. There you go. And then there's Cross Current. That's Joe DeMaldaris' place where I met Joe, you know, 20 years ago. And we've been fishing together ever since. Trout Town Flies is Joe Rist. He's right in downtown Roscoe, Joe Fox at, at Deddy's Flies in Livingston Manor. You got the Baxter House, uh, Kenny, and Delaware River Cub, Je Jeff White, and you got Sam at the West Branch Angler. All these people can provide you with a guide that'll show you everything you need to know about a particular river. And they are the experts, not me, just so you know. Now, if you want to explore, all you really need is a map. I mean, you don't have to read the books. You don't have to get a guide, you can just get a map because the map's going to tell you where the rivers are. Now, this is out of uh, Austin Francis's book, uh, Land of Little Rivers, which is what Paul uh, named this presentation. And it's obviously not to scale or anything. It's, uh, it's not meant to be uh, something you would drive to, but I like it because it shows you something that's very important. And that's all these little squiggly lines all these squiggly lines that don't, if they have a name, you don't know it. But you know what? They've got fish in. Also, this is called what they used to call the charmed 
circle. Cecil Hickok, uh, Hickox was a uh, uh, editor of uh, I think Outdoor Life and ran a ran a article on, called the Charm Circle of the Catskills. Now this is this is a 1120 square miles. It's a big place. There's a lot here, but but look how close everything is. In the old days, they would start here and they'd hike over the mountain to this one, and then they'd hike over the mountain to that one, and they'd hike over the mountain to that one. I mean, it was like it was all connected. It's a beautiful place. When Paul was saying there's so much water, there you see it. There you see it. So there's two main drainages in the Catskills. One goes to the Hudson, and the streams, the main streams that, that go to the Hudson, uh, from starting from the north, is uh, Catskill Creek, then the Schoharie, and the Schoharie is fed by the Batavia Kill and the West Kill. And then there's the Esophis, and then there's the Rondo. And they're all ending up in the Hudson. And most of them have trout in the upper reaches and warm water species in the lower reach, uh, reaches. But they all have tributaries, and all the tributaries, or at least most of them, are going to have trout and probably brook trout. So here's Catskill Creek. Uh, and I started fishing in Catskill Creek. And the only reason I've been fishing 60 years is I started very young. My father brought me there before I was 10. And we stayed in the Irish Alps at a, an Irish resort. And uh, we were brought to, uh, to Catskill Creek. And we got a drop line and a worm. And we caught a trout. So that's how I started fishing the Catskills. And it's a beautiful place. And my friend Joe Odierna has a house up there and takes us up there uh, every year. And he's taking this video. I'll let you listen. Now, the Catskill Creek is a stock fishery for the most part, although there are holdovers. And you can probably find some brookies if you go upstream a bit. That gives you an idea of what the Catskill Creek looks like. And it, it goes for some distance. Uh, I think it's 30 miles long, Joe, right? And here is where that little waterfall is. So if you haven't seen that waterfall, you have been to Catskill Creek. Got to go there. Next, we have the Schoharie, which is more of a major river and has more history to it. Uh, Art Flick was famous for his inn at Westkill, which is down here, which is a tributary. The Batavia Kill comes in. And by the way, don't be fooled. There's another river in the Catskills called the Batavia Kill. It's over by Margaretville. Uh, but this is the main Batavia Kill. It comes out of Wind Wyndham, I believe. Uh, and Hunter's over here. Here's Hunter. Uh, this area of the Catskills has become less popular because, well, first of all, Hurricane Irene some time ago blew the whole place out, almost took Prattsville down the river. Um, it's repaired itself quite quite a bit, and uh, there is there's beautiful water there to fish, and it's not crowded, uh, so it's something you want to think about. Let me show you what it looks like. Tom, that is, blue line, is, Tom, is that access? Are you allowed to access it? Is good access on that river? There's a lot of access on the Schoharie. Yes. Um, what you do is you drive along here and then you have to cross over before you get the hunter, you got to cross over and fish this side. Okay. And then you cross over and fish this side. And what I'm going to show you is right here, just above Prattsville. That's the next one. This is a, just below the Art Flick Memorial and, uh, above Prattsville. Good sized river. But notice how bare it is. It's been blown out by these hurricanes. That's Joe fishing downstream. So it's a good piece of water, and there's a lot of it. Then you have the Batavia Kill, which feeds it. It's a smaller stream, and it's very uh, sensitive to temperature. So you're going to find it, it, it actually has a uh, it can go dry, not dry, but just about dry uh, if there's not a lot of rain. So it's very rain sensitive and it's it needs the snow snow cap to keep it going, which we're not getting these days. But uh, it's a beautiful place to explore. 
and then the West Kill. And the, and the West Kill to me is famous because I love Art Flick and he's always been a kind of a hero of mine. And this, as you look here, is as you as you drive as high as you can drive along the West Kill and you get out of the car, this is what you're, you're looking at. It's a brook trout stream. And up here somewhere is a waterfall to which to hike. And you can hike, there's a lot of private land, but right here there's a public parking spot, okay? Uh, along the way, you go down, you can look to park by bridges and such. This is just before it enters the Schoharie. The Schoharie's down here. And this is about as big as it gets. And uh, Art Flick would talk about fishing the West Kill, but the truth is he really fished the Schoharie more than the West Kill. And then there's the queen. The queen of this drainage is the Yosophis Creek. Yosophis Creek is it's probably one of the best wild rainbow trout rivers we have. Now, I know a lot of people would argue with me saying there's beautiful wild rainbows in the Delaware, and there are. But the Ashokan Reservoir houses, you know, millions of uh, rainbow trout that run up this stream and all these little feeders to spawn every year. And there's some amazing fishing to be had in this river. <clears throat> now, we got a little issue here. See Shandaken? Right here, there's a portal that runs from the Schoharie Reservoir all the way to the Esophis Creek, and it feeds the Esophis Creek extra water. In actuality, it feeds the reservoir, right? It transfers the water from one reservoir to another. So above here is wild and, and subject to snow melt and such. And down here, you've got a, a, a supported fishery all season long, cool most of the year. And this is what it looks like when you go upstream. Notice how clear it is. It's just a beautiful piece of water. That's above the portal? This is above the portal. And Joe, Joe pulled a little brown trout out of there that day. Now here's the portal. And it's not running at this time. They did some repairs on it. I don't know what year I took this, last year or year before, but they were repairing the portal and cleaning it out because it, it obviously discharges a lot of silt from the bottom of the reservoir that enters the river here. And what you'll see here is clear water, right? That's because the portal shut down. If it was running, this would have a, a, a bit of a tone to it. It would be a little a little milky. Big, Big Indian, if you look at the map, Big Indian is where the upper surface is above the portal. Albin is where the uh, portal is. And then everything downstream is, is supplemented water. Let's go to the next one. Here's Woodland Valley Creek. Paul was mentioning that he drove up there. This is Joe Pepe. Woodland Valley is a major trip to the surface. And there's others, there's Stony Clove and there's another beaver kill. Again, there's different rivers that have the same name and the same group of mountains that support the uh, Asophis. So Woodland Valley Creek, uh, you, there's Woodland Valley Campground, look for it on the map, drive to the top, get out, fish. Uh, as you go down here, there's some private land, uh, but you can look for accesses. And at the mouth, well, let me show you what the mouth looks like. Here's what it looks like as you This is the Asophis running downstream. Woodland Valley Creek comes in just below this spot. Woodland Valley Creek is right over here behind this house. So that's Woodland Valley Creek area. Here's, uh, as you head on down, you're gonna go past Phoenicia. There's tons of spots. There's plenty of pullovers. There's plenty of DEC parking. This is as you make the, the major turn down towards the Route 28 bridge. Um, and it's just a quick. So that's, that's just below the old bridge and above the Route 28 bridge. And here is, here's the Route 28 bridge 
downstream, okay? And now you see how improved it is with all this structure. That's because of the floods. So here's where it turns down towards the reservoir. Is there a, is that the uh, five arches? No, not yet. I'll show you that next. Okay. This is just below the Route 28 bridge. Mount, Mount Tremble. Yeah, there was a railroad that ran along here. And they used to run it in the summer. I don't know if they still do for tourists. And the so you use hand carts in there now. Do they have hand carts? Okay, good. Yeah. So here, as you go downstream, you're going to pull by Boyceville. You're going to pull into the, uh, the, the rail trail uh, hiking parking lot. And uh, you have to have a DEC permit because you're now entering the watershed, the uh, D DEP, New York City watershed. And uh, so you, you'll need your permit. But the Five Arches Bridge is where you start and you walk on down. And when you get down to here, you're at the chimney hole. And here's the chimney laying sideways here that, the, that it's named for. And from here down is the reservoir. So take a look. That, that water is so deep. You can't imagine the fish that are in there. And then here it turns into the stream again. And that white sign there says the reservoir is this way and the stream's that way. So that's the esophis and don't miss it. That's, that's a river you should get to know. Some people spend their whole life fishing the esophis without having to go too many other places. It's got all kinds of faces to it. And some years are terrific, and some years are a little not so good. <laughs> so you take your chances. Big Isonychia hatch on the Yosophis. So come June, May, end of May, June, and again in September, big Isonychias. Now here's the Rondout. Now Rondout is a river not many people that uh, fly go to to fly fish. Uh, a lot of people go to it for the Picamos, which is a very popular hiking area. So popular that they've put all kinds of controls on access to this place, but there's a campground right here. So if you want, you can come camp here and you can fish the round out here. This trip here happens to be a very productive one. And here's the big reservoir. Reservoir also holds fish. You know, people do fish reservoirs. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you can have a friend with a boat on one. Um, but there's some huge fish in this reservoir. And then below it down here, they do, they do more stock and they stock some up here and they stock some down here but it's pretty much locals that fish it as opposed to uh, people traveling or spending a weekend on the, on the roundout. So it's, it's another exciting place for you to try if you haven't been there before. That's what it looks like. Beautiful water. I stole these photos off the internet. So I put a disclaimer up there. So now we got another drainage. We got the Delaware drainage. Delaware is much more popular. Uh, it's where all, a lot of the history unfolds and it's where there's a lot, a lot of water, a lot of hatches, but also a lot of fishermen, people, okay? So it can be very crowded. You could be racing to a, uh, a pullout to get a parking spot uh, before they're all filled up. So that's why you want to know about that Hudson River drainage, because believe me, there's plenty of room over there. So if you get sick and tired of racing for parking spots on the Delaware side, get yourself over the other side. But let's take a look. So we got the Neversink. Again, a famous river, made famous pretty much by Hewitt, who had a place right here uh, called the Big Bend. It's now the reservoir, so they 
They actually flooded his property, but he he did a lot of experimentation on how to how to nurture fish in in the uh, in the Never Sink and how to feed them and have get them to grow big. Uh, so up here, mostly private. There's something called Frost Valley up here, which is a YMCA, which if you're part of that group, you can, you can access their water. But there's probably one DEC spot here and one DEC spot here, another one down here by Claryville, and then all private. Down here, much more open water, much more. Okay, and then it crosses 17 and it keeps going. It keeps going all the way to the Delaware. So there's plenty of water on the Never Sink. Let me show you some. Here's as far upstream as I have got, which is just below where the East and West Branch meet. Whoop, how'd that happen? Never sink is known to be cold. It also doesn't have a lot of bug bug life up here. This is a bit of a hike from the DEC uh, spot, parking spot. That's Scott Beck working a fish. And here's below, we go all the way down below the reservoir now, and we're working uh, our way down towards Rock Hill, or towards Bridgeville, if you will. This is above Bridgeville. And this is uh, what you see, bugs and fish. Now the next part of the of the Never Sink that's really amazing is the gorge. When you fish that middle section from below the reservoir to Route 17, and you end up like Holiday Mountain ski area, I think it, it kind of is the last access to the that stretch of the of the river. It's kind of a uh, it meanders. It's just a slow running stream, and there's there's a lot of housing around and such. When you go to the gorge which is just below Route 17, you don't see anybody. In fact, you're hiking in, I guess, a mile, maybe less, but about a mile, and it's a, a good steep hike. So you, you really have to earn your chops to fish this, this water. But notice the crowds. an eye on that rock. Beautiful. There you go. We were just waiting for that fish. Let me move you along a little bit. Downstream a little. Gets a little more interesting. There's Joe sitting down again. I'll bring you down here. He's still working that fish. <laughs> yeah, not today, Mike. <laughs> hey, Tom. Yeah. When 
when somebody when you said that it's private from a certain point if you're in the river are you okay or are you supposed well, there, to there's a lot of discussion about that and when we get to the east branch we'll i'll be talking about that specifically andy this is this is the access by katrina falls road that uh is a kind of the easiest access in it's just below 17 katrina falls right. road take it to the end and walk and here's joe fishing that section and here's Joe's uh, never sink record. I oh. call it a 20 inch fish. He says it's 19 and three quarters. Okay. <laughs> Let's get to the beaver kill. We got the beaver kill and the willow weemack, which uh, combine to form the big beaver kill. Okay. And again, notice how close everything is. Here's the never sink river. Here's the top of the willow. Now here's the top of the beaver kill. I mean, everything's here. <laughs> here's the east branch over here. Everything's very close, but as the crow flies. Here's Mongup. I want you to remember Mongup, all right? Because I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So we know where Roscoe is. That's where this all begins. That's where the Willow Weemack and the uh, Beaver Kill meet. So let's take the Beaver Kill first. Let's go all the way to the top of it, at least as far as I've, can go, I've gone. This is Beaver Kill Falls, which you will never see because it's private land. And this is the water just by Joan Wolfe's school up the up Beaver Kill. And again, unless you go into her school, you, you won't see this water either. All private, okay? There was a time when you could stay at the Beaver Kill Valley Inn and fish three miles of this river, all the way up to those falls, which I was fortunate enough to do for a couple of years. Then the uh, valley got organized and gentrified, and uh, Larry Rockefeller moved in and... Uh, they uh, made it a private club. And so all that upper water is private. But if you stay at the Beaverkill Valley Inn, which is not cheap, you can fish a mile of this water. Okay, so if you really want to see what the upper Beaverkill is like, you can go to the Beaverkill Valley Inn, which is a beautiful place, you know, like a four-star chef there. A um, little expensive, but very nice. And you get a, to fish this water. Or... If you're a little more of a camper, you can go to the Beaverkill campsite, which is just by Lou Beach and uh, just below where the uh, Beaverkill Valley Inn is. All everything up, this is at the top of the campsite, campground water. Everything up here is private. Everything down until I show you the last slide is where you can fish. You got over a mile of water that you can fish the upper Beaverkill if you go to the campsite. And there's the famous Beaverkill covered bridge. This is the uh, Theodore Gordon pool right here. And there are huge cruising fish in here that are so damn smart. Just to hook one, never mind land one, is, is, is a real feat. But here's my grandson, and he did all right, just right off the rocks here. But that's not one of the big cruisers. Now here's what it looks like as you go down. Here's the bridge. Now we're down below it, okay? Here's what it looks like. Largest water. Now the campground used to be over here. They closed all these sites, although now I hear they're going to open them again. But you can cross over and walk down through those old sites to get to this other water. And here's a little further down. Love these hemlocks. You don't see too many hemlocks in the Cat Catskills anymore. This is what it used to look like in Theodore Gordon's age. There was nothing but hemlocks all over the place and fish under them. So again, you can cross here and you can walk all the way down. And where you get to, when you get to this rock, you're done. Right below this is the Clear Lake Club water. That's the beginning of the private water. It continues private all the way to the 306 bridge, uh, 206 bridge. So here we are. Here's Roscoe. This is called Rockland. Here's two, Route 206. There's a bridge that crosses the river. If you go to the Roscoe Motel, which is right by Junction Pool, you can sit <laughs> outside your door and look at the river. It goes right, look how close that is. Now, naturally, when they have floods, they have a little problem but you're right on the river. You could get in the river here and walk to the 206 bridge. 
if you were 16 years old. Here's the 206. And notice the watermark here. The river had just dropped over a foot. You can park on both sides of this bridge. Public land, those are not posted signs, those are public land signs. You can't hear me mumbling there, but I'm just talking about the, they stock this heavily, because it's easy access for them to stock. So you usually always get some fish in here, but you get around this bend and it's very interesting and more challenging. And you can get, you can get amazing fish in here. Now here, here is Rockland, which means behind, as you drive up 206, you're going past like the Rockland uh, uh, restaurant there, the steakhouse, Rockland Inn, I guess it's called. And, uh, all behind that is beautiful water, and there's two accesses, one on Statler Street and one uh, with a DEC market sign called, uh, it's called Pigpen, actually. But here's what it looks like. One of the things you got to deal with is the knotweed. There's tons, tons of knotweed all through Rockland, the whole, all the way up to the 206 bridge and all the way down to, to Junction Pool just about. And it's really dense. I mean, it's so dense, you almost can't find where you, where you came in. You have to kind of hang a ribbon in, in the weeds so you know where to get out of the river. But this spot, it's beautiful. But you got to wait for it, you know? Uh, I was down here fishing. And a bunch of guys came and they're bum bum and they did the bit and they didn't get anything, so they left. And then I got this. You have to wait. You got to put in your time in this water, okay? And there's there's some beautiful rainbows in there and there's some browns in there, and you might even find a brookie or two. So don't overlook Rockland. And here's Junction Pool, and I think everybody that's been to the Catskills knows it. It's famous for its two-headed trout, one looking up the willow, one looking up the beaver kill and not knowing which way to go. This happens to be opening day, the opening day ceremonies, that are, which are hosted by the Catskill Fly Fishing Museum, which we'll talk about later. So no one's catching any fish this day. This is April 1st, and it's cold. The water's probably 48 degrees. So let's look at the willow. See, so here's what the upper willow looks like. During a nice spinner fall. Laying those eggs. So needless to say, a lot of bugs in the willow. And as you go down, again, there's access points, there's DEC parking, so you can, it's easy to find, just look for the signs. This is Mike Perotti, caught a beautiful brown trout in here. And this was early spring, this, the water was about 50 degrees. So you gotta, you gotta work for it. And here's the willow that you won't see, just like that beaver kill waterfall, you're not gonna see this waterfall. This is Hunter's Falls, comes out of Hunter's Lake, which is on the other side. And uh, it's on the DeBruce Club water. DeBruce Club leases five miles of the willow. Um, and from where that waterfall is, in fact, even a little above it, all the way down to the, uh, the DeBruce Inn uh, is their private water. And you need to be invited by a guest to come. And even as a guest, you pay 100 bucks for the day. Uh, if you ever get the chance, it's well worth it. It's beautiful water, it's well stocked, and uh, and there's some nice folks involved too. Famous old club, we'll talk more about that. Now, if you wanna get close to the private water, you can fish Mongup Creek. I showed you that on the map earlier. This is my grandson, Hunter. 
he's fly fishing for the first time, and there's his trout. And that's on Mongup Creek, right by the DEC camp and hatchery, as you drive up towards Mongup Lake or Mongup Pond. And Mongup Pond is a state campground at the headwaters, and it's in the middle of New York State wild war wild forest. So you can do all kinds of things up there. You can actually get on Mongup Creek right below this lake and walk down to where my grandson was fishing. And you can even fish below that. There's, there's a couple access points. A lot of it is private, so you have to be careful. Where the Mongup enters uh, the, the uh, willow is where George LeBranch first floated a dry fly. So that's, that's kind of a famous spot in the Catskill history. Now, the DeBruce Inn is not the DeBruce Club. Okay, this is a hotel that was owned by, actually, it's owned by the sister of the guy who owns all the water that releases to the DeBruce Club. Kotcher family. And uh, she ran this with her husband and uh, re then sold it. And uh, behind it is this water. So the, the Bruce Club water ends here. And then you, they have this hotel. Or it's now uh, called the De Bruce. No more in. And it costs twice as much. And uh, But you have about a quarter mile of water that you can fish behind this place. And they also have a big trout pond behind it, which I don't think anybody really fishes that. And the lady that used to own that now owns this, which is right across the street called the Rose Cottage. And uh, I highly recommend that as a nice B&B &B if you're up here. They, they actually have dinner too there if you want to bring your, uh, your significant other and have a, a nice day at the, a nice time on the willow. Here's what it looks like when you get below to Bruce. This is upstream of uh, one of the DEC parking spots where you can go either up or down. Most people go down. And down is uh, such things as the, man the what they call the mansion pool, which kind of got filled in by some of the storms and isn't really a pool anymore. But you can walk all the way on down there, oh, I'd say a mile or two at least, before it turns private again. There are other places, resorts and such that you can stay in below this point, which have access to the water, but you have to be a guest of that particular place. So you can research that out. But here's what it looks like as you get down there. And again, plenty of fish. That's what used to be the mansion pool is right here. This rock has all filled it in though. It's pretty much gone. And then you get, when you get past all that private water and you get back to public water again, uh, you're gonna come to where uh, the fur fin and feather fly shop is and you're gonna the, the old Willow Mac Hotel and you're gonna take a couple turns past Livingston Manor and you're gonna come to the museum and what they call Wolf Run in, in honor of the Wolf family. Um, this museum was started in eight, 87, I think, and they used to have an office in town. And it wasn't a museum, it was just a kind of an organization trying to collect enough money to build a museum. And they did. They did because people like LITU uh, donated to build this bridge across. And on the other side, they were they got a house, which they then added to the a big casting pond to it and a number of other buildings. They have a, fly, a, a bamboo fly rod shop. They've got an art gallery. They've got uh, all kinds of stuff down there. Uh, and obviously, they celebrate all of the fly tires of old, all from Halford and Gordon all the way through today's folks, you know. And they have a Hall of Fame that goes all around the building, honoring the various people that have contributed to fly fishing in the Catskills. It's a wonderful place. And for 35 bucks, you get, you get to join and you get to... Uh, Use the property. You can use the casting pond. You can even sleep there. They have they have cabins that you can sleep in if you're a hearty soul and have a sleeping bag. And they have unique exhibits as well as the, the standard Catskill stuff. Now, this is a uh, Akimora, friend of uh, Chuck Noiner, is a friend of mine, and I got to fish with Aki. He 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 builds some of the finest bamboo rods in Japan. He even ma hand makes the ferrules. 
he spends more time making his ferals than Chuck spends making a whole rock. So it's really amazing, amazing stuff. So you'll find stuff like that at the museum. You'll also find things from Long Island Zone. Now here's Jack Pangburn, who's not with us anymore, but Jack was a good friend of all of ours and uh, internationally known fly tire. And he had an exhibit up there, be, luckily before he passed uh, in the museum. If you're into Catskills, you got to be into Catskill flies. Okay, that's the whole deal. You fly, fly fishing began there, Paul said, right? And that's debatable, but there is a school of Catskill flies, and the fly, Catskill Fly Tires Guild keeps that tradition alive. And for twenty bucks a year, you join this organization. They send you a newsletter every every month. They have Zoom uh, tying sessions where they show you how to tie each of these flies and share all their tricks with you. Uh, it's got a core group of guys that are the, probably the best fly tires in the Catskills. So think about that. So back to the willow. Remember, we were at the wolf run on the willow before I got diverted there. So here's, here's the willow below the museum. That water runs down to Hazel Bridge. Or I think the water, no, no, it's not Hazel Bridge. It runs down towards Cottage Street. And here's Rhododendron Pool. If you're on 17 and you're heading out of Roscoe and you're going back to New York, you pass a rest stop, pull into that rest stop, park your car, Put your waders on and walk to the woods. This is what you'll see. <laughs> you see this rope hanging here? This is the local swimming hole. So in the warmer weather, you, you know, don't bother the people that are swimming. That's their hole too, right? But you can walk all the way up here to Hazel and you can walk all the way down. And it's it's in this is in full full flow in the spring. There's times when you've got a rock bed out to here. So it does get, it does, it again is uh, snow melt dependent and, and water dependent. That's my friend Manny on the Willow. It's just a gorgeous stream. It's probably my favorite. It and the Upper Beaver Kill are probably my two favorite spots on the entire, uh, in this entire system, to be honest with you. Here's Jeff near Hazel with a nice fish. And now we get to the Big Beaver Kill. Now, where the beaver kill starts is Junction Pool. And it runs until it hits the East Branch. And then the East Branch dominates it. Okay, so it absorbs the beaver kill and becomes the East Branch all the way down to Hancock. So you got your East Branch here, your, will, your beaver kill here. And all you have to do is follow the signs. You know, the, the uh, Theodore Gordon folks, and, and, and others have uh, not only put these signs up, but they maintain them. And DEC has their signs up as well. So it's really hard to miss. So you got for Don Zeddy, you got, uh, which is just below uh, Junction Pool, then you come on to Barnhart's, then you come to Hendrickson's, then you get the Horsebrook Run. There are so many named pools. And these I got from Ed Van Putt's book, The Beaver Kill, by the way, that I showed you in the beginning. And also that article on Paul's, new, in Paul's newsletter. But here's all the named pools that you're going to find signs for. I was on, I was on um, cemetery pool and I'm getting dressed and a guy comes over and says, uh, I'm looking for cemetery pool and I'm, I'm standing there and the sign's right behind us. So <laughs> look for the signs. Here's what Ferdun's looks like. This is just below Junction. Again, springtime. Nice thing about this spot is you can drive right down to the edge of the river here. So if you got some mobility issues, it's a good spot. 
And there are fish are there. And it's usually not this flooded if you go a little later in the year. Here's Barnhart's, which is the next stop down. Big, big pool, big long walk. You could start at the Riffle and walk for a oh, mile till you get to Hendrickson's. And when you get to Hendrickson's, this is what you see. This is from the other side, away from Route 17, the old 17. This gigantic eddy is just filled with fish. And then you keep going down, you're going to go <clears throat> past Karen's Pool and Acid Factory and all the others, Painter's Bend, Wagon Tracks. You're going to end up at Cemetery Pool eventually when you get down by Horton. And so I love fishing Cemetery Pool at night. Uh, it, it just seems to really wake up at night. Although I've caught fish there during the day as well. It's a very popular pool. It's got a big parking lot and again, a lot of knotweed. Then there's the beaver kill at Sunoco. And you know what the sign is there? It's the Sunoco gas station sign. Okay, so that's all you need there. You walk through the woods, you park to the left of the gas station. And this is what you see. This is a all riprap that was put in because of flooding. But the water here comes out of uh, Chilloway, is it? Uh, no, not Chilloway. I'll think of it. Comes around a bend and acid factory. And then gets into a deep chute here. Deep chute. Really moves through. Now, the truth is, I've caught fish about where he's standing. You stand on this rock, and they're coming out to feed when there's a hatch. They're feeding right here. They're sipping, sipping spinners right here. So be careful about walking in the water too soon. Here's Scott. The fish always rise against these rocks and you can never get them. <laughs> Very hard to get. But it's always interesting water. And that's by the Riverside Resort where we go every year, at least LITU and Long Island Fly, uh, fly Rotters and Art Flick fly, uh, TU, all of us have a weekend at the Riverside Resort where we rent the whole place out and have our meals there and have a good time and fish that water and all the water around there. So again, think about joining these organizations. And here's what it looks like when you get down below Water gets a little bigger. And that runs all the way down until you get to uh, the East Branch. So here's the East Branch. And uh, the interesting thing about the East Branch is there's an upper East Branch. There's a middle East Branch. And there's a lower East Branch. Okay. Three different spots. Here it is in the upper. This is by Margaretville. All public access. Here there's no signs, though. You have to kind of feel your way. This is above the town or downstream of uh, the town of Margaretville. And here's Luke. Just below that spot. <clears throat> Watch here. Here's Luke's fish here, and there's another fish there. Great spot. Now we get below the reservoir, 
here's the, the long flats, it's called, and it definitely is long and it definitely is flat. And this is on below, actually a little below that, okay? But the thing about the flats is you run into this, and this is what Paul was talking about in terms of some legal challenges. There's a lot of private property up on the east branch, and as you get to the top of the flats, you see these signs, and uh, they didn't have, a, they couldn't fit any more signs on this thing, right? Um, but you see the Long Flats Homeowners Association, um, and they don't want you on their water, and uh, they will patrol it, and they will have you you picked up and prosecuted. So that's what's being discussed in terms of. Uh, is that really fair? I mean, they own both sides of the river, so they get they get to tell you what to do. Below this, you can fish most of the river all the way down till you get to the junction of the beaver cut. Now here is a beautiful spot below the flats. This is Joe again. If you're wondering if how big the fish are, how big was it? It was big. It was it was over twenty, wasn't it, Joe? I think so. And this is when you get to where the Beaver Kill and the uh, East Branch meet. There's a bridge that goes across, and you'll see like a slate factory, and you can park there, and you, you can walk down into the river and fish above the bridge and under the bridge, and then when you get through the bridge, this is heading to Hancock, and the water uh, gets bigger as it goes around all the way to Hancock. I, mean, I think there's about maybe 10 miles left of the river here. It's quite a, quite a run, and uh, interesting water, and you can float this. I know uh, uh, Ken at, back, at, at Baxter uh, likes to float. Uh, Luke likes to float with Ken at Baxter on this, and they always do well, and Joe Pepe too. So now let's get to the West Branch. Same thing with the West Branch. There's an upper West Branch, there's a middle West Branch, and there's a lower West Branch, okay? The upper is a small stream, but has a lot, has a lot of fish. They Well, they, they heavily stock this up here, uh, but it's small water, all the way to Walton, okay? So you want to fish from here to Walton, okay? And you can try above as well. Uh, but definitely check out the, uh, the trips that, that come in. Some of it is private, so you got to be careful about that. The, Reservoir has a ton of fish in it. Again, if you have a friend with a boat, God bless you. And then there's the dam and the first section that goes down to deposit and then the rest of the run that goes all the way to Hancock where it joins the East Branch. So here's what it looks like at Stilesville, which is just below the dam. This is during a sulfur hatch. The big guy comes. Boom. That's styles, man. Water is always cold. In fact, in the summer, when you get a 98 degree day, you go down there, the water's like 58, and there's like a fog on the water from the difference in temperatures. Really interesting. Now, when you get down below, below deposit, you know, a lot of it's floating, but you don't have to float. You, there are, are streamside accesses. You just have to find them. And uh, and you can fish, you know, wade in and fish. But a good way to get to know the river is to take a guide and float it. So you get to see all the holes. And the guide fills you in. He tells you where everything is happening. Good way to learn the river. 
as you go down from uh, Hale Eddy, you go past the game lands, which is a very beautiful area. There's no construction or housing or anything here. And again, you can walk into this, okay? You can park on the Pennsylvania side and you can walk into this or you can float it down. You can stay at West Branch Anglers, which is right on the Delaware. It's in uh, at uh, Hale Eddy. Uh, although I think they say it's otherwise. I think they say it's deposit, right? It's the mailbox. But they have these great cabins, beautiful cabins. <laughs> Big, big resort. They have a restaurant that stays open for fishermen. And you can fish right out the door. Right out the door, there's plenty of fish. Or you can take a guide, or you can walk yourself. You can even rent a boat yourself, but I don't recommend that unless you, you know, experience that. And here's as you head down from there, uh, just above Balls Eddy, which is a major take-in and, and put-in uh, spot on the Pennsylvania side. And there's Joe with a beautiful brown. Now, one of the things you're going to find on the Delaware these days is it's super, super crowded. In fact, when Joe and I pulled out this day, we pulled out at dark. There had to be, I don't know, 20 drift boats waiting to use the ramp. I mean, it was like being in New York City. But again, don't forget about the east side of the Catskills. When, when you get tired of that kind of stuff, you know, head to the other side. Or walk yourself. You can walk down the main stem. You can drive down all the way from Hancock. There's access points. In fact, there's a motel right here somewhere that uh, has, uh, what's it, White's, White's Colonial? And you can walk behind White's Colonial and you can fish the river. You can go to Lordville. There's a bridge in Lordville and Equinox. And on down, you can fish all the way to Calcum. Okay. And then there it is at Stockport. You can see it's a big river now. And here it is below Buckingham, which is pretty far down. This is by Lordsville here. Uh, wow. My friend Manny and Joe into a big rainbow. So if you don't like crowds, there's another alternative to the east side, and that is be a blue line hunter. And what we mean by blue line hunters is all the blue lines. All these little lines represent opportunities to fish, especially for brook trout, but to be alone and to be quiet and to be with nature. And here's what it looks like. You don't need a 10 foot rod. And the brookies are small, but spunky and beautifully colored. And there seem to be enough of them. Again, you want to go when it's wet because these streams can get very thin in the summer. So all you gotta do is explore. You get out there, use a map, try a new place each time, spend some time in the place you go to. Remember those guys in Rockland that came down and jumped in the water, didn't say anything and jumped out and then I caught a fish. So spend some time. When you decide to go to a place, I suggest, you know, you spend your time there and you think the hatch is happening someplace else, but it might be happening right where you are, just not at the time. You have to wait for it. It comes. Now, this is a new book by Mike Valla. Mike is one of the Catskill Fly Tire Guild members, and uh, he was actually taught to tie flies by the daddies themselves. He's a great guy. He's written a bunch of books on traditional Catskill flies, but he just put this one out, and it has all of New York State in it. But in the Catskill region, look at this. Catskill Creek, Asophis, Neversink, Willow, Oh, Skahari, West Kill, Batavia, everything I just mentioned to you, and more. And what he has in here is he has directions. He actually gives you the route numbers, the road numbers, what the intersection is, what type of fly to use. I definitely think you should buy this book. It's brand new. 
In fact, the first printing, I think, is sold out. You might find some at Daddy's Fly Shop because he, he's close to the Daddy's, but look for it online if you can't find it. Thank you again to River Bay and uh, Paul. You've been a wonderful friend, and I really appreciate the opportunity. Anybody wants to know more about me, my website is Tom's Fishing Stories, and it's also on YouTube, Tom's Fishing Stories. And I have a few books. Uh, you'll find them on the website. So thanks again, everybody. Questions are, are welcome. You can unmute yourselves. We'll listen to you now. <laughs> Tom, can I ask a question about Harry? Yeah, you can, but I, I'm not an expert on it, but I'll answer what I can. I, I read somewhere that from the reservoir down south, it's bass water. But I think yes. where Art Flick, where Art Flick's monument is, from yep. there down, further down, it's trout water? Uh, up. Up is trout water. What you want to do is um, when you go to Prattsville, okay, yes. you're going to find a, a, a small dam. Below that dam is bass. Above the dam is trout. And the dam was built specifically to keep the bass from the reservoir going upstream to eat the ba eat the baby trout. Now, it doesn't work 100%, of course, but that's the kind of the demarcation. In Prattsville, there's this little dam and uh, which water, water flowing over it, and it keeps the bass down, and there's tons of smallmouth there. I mean, I was there with, with Ray. Ray and I were up there uh, at, on a TU thing, and I had, th had a frog on, and I just was talking to Ray, and the frog was, frog was floating in the water, and bam, a smallie <laughs> got it, or a carpy got it, or something. <laughs> so it, it's great water. Yeah, the, the, the Schoharie is filled with bass. Good okay, fish. thank you. Okay, I want to thank Tom for his time and his expertise. And, and I know it may, it got my uh, blood boiling to get out there and do more fishing and explore more. Um, and I hope uh, you enjoyed this and we'll be, uh, keep following because we're going to have more of these uh, presentations and, and some will be in my shop.